In late 2009, Western Willow Ventures Incorporated, also known as WIVI, began researching aerial photography and videography solutions. They were very quickly intrigued by the potential of hobby-classed multi-rotor aircraft. After three months of research into the various designs and technologies in use, they settled on a quadcopter. The quadcopter format has been around since the 1920s and was the first helicopter of any kind to make a flight distance record. The recent influx of lithium polymer battery technology out of China has made this sort of aircraft a reality, and in April, Wivy purchased a quadcopter kit and some flight training equipment and got down to work. The result was RD 0.0. RD stands for Aerial Research Drone 1. In mid-May, Wivy and the government of the Northwest Territories discussed a joint project to explore wildland fire possibilities with this new technology. Project FireEye was born. With Wivy providing the aircraft and the GNWT providing human resources, flight training ensued and by May 20th, flight tests have already begun. Artie is what is known as a VTOL craft, or a vertical takeoff and landing craft, but that's where similarity to other aircraft end. Artie has flight physics quite unlike anything being used commercially today, and although many modern companies have plans afoot to produce human-sized quadcopters, no one is doing it at a commercial scale yet. Artie is very light and very fast, and can go from standing on the ground with power off to hovering at 500 feet in the air in mere seconds. That's faster than any commercial helicopter or even a Harrier jump jet. Artie can fly by falling off the air in any direction regardless of its orientation, and can hover near perfectly still at any altitude. Artie's flight computers handle a variety of things including stabilization using the same accelerometer technology found in your cell phone. This makes Artie very stable and a perfect candidate for transporting photography and videography equipment. Artie carries a variety of different payloads in various configurations. Primarily though, Artie must carry a command and control receiver that operates at 2.4 GHz, just like the Wi-Fi on your laptop. This receives commands from a computer control held by the pilot. Artie usually carries a couple different cameras. One is a high-definition camcorder that saves its video to a memory chip. This allows Artie to have onboard high-quality video. This HD camera runs in multiple HD formats, including 1080p, 960p, and 720p at 30 frames per second. This camera also runs at 720p at 60 frames per second, depending on the need or the mission. In addition, Artie usually carries a real-time camera, which is either a lightweight CMOS camera, also known as a CMOS camera, or an advanced Sony CCD low-light camera. These cameras are usually connected to a transmitter that sends the video real-time back to the ground station using 5.8 GHz technology usually found in cordless phones in the home. The cameras are mounted on a servo-controlled mount that uses Artie's built-in stabilization system to compensate for forward and backward tilting and moves the camera mount to match. So if the pilot points the camera straight down, then flies forward and backward by falling off the air, the camera stays pointed directly at the ground. Artie also carries a sophisticated flight data recorder that tracks and records speed, altitude, voltages, amperages, and more. This system stores data on internal memory and interfaces to an on-screen display system. The on-screen system intercepts the video from the real-time onboard camera and overlays flight data and instrumentation into the video feed before handing it back to the video transmitter to be sent back to the grand station. Further, using the sideband audio channels of the transmitter, it provides voice information, such as audible voice warnings about low voltages or low altitude. In addition, the system will also provide acoustic variometer to indicate rate of climb and descent information via audio. The ground station can then decode additional information, such as telemetry and location information that's embedded in the audio, and decode it and use it to display the location of the aircraft on Google Earth or other geospatial display systems. At the ground station, real-time footage can either be watched on a monitor or through virtual reality immersion goggles, which give the wearer an out-of-body-like experience as though they were inside the aircraft itself looking through the front window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
When someone besides the pilot is wearing the goggles, Artie is considered to be in observer mode. When no goggles are used, Artie is in visual mode. And lastly, when the pilot wears the goggles and flies from Artie's point of view, this is called FPV or first person video mode. When in visual or observer mode, Artie is limited by the visual range of the pilot, who must be able to see Artie's orientation, to be able to control the aircraft. This is roughly 100 to 175 meters, depending on light conditions and the vector of the pilot. As a general rule, Artie is not flown over 500 feet, and in fact, in the United States, 300 feet is the legal limit for this class of aircraft. When in FPV mode, the aircraft can be flown beyond visual range, but for safety's sake, this is only done in remote areas, where in the unlikely event of a crash, no one could be hurt. In FPV mode, ARDI is limited by the transmitters and receivers and their reception ranges, but the current version of ARDI has a theoretical range of up 2 kilometers up and 3 kilometers away. Exploration at those distances are further limited by battery life, and battery life depends on many factors, including the weather. For example, windier days mean less battery time. Currently, ARDI does not fly in rain conditions, as it is not waterproof and many of the electronics are unprotected to conserve weight. Payload affects battery life. The more that Artie carries, the less battery time there is. Further, onboard sensors, cameras, and transmitters all consume power. Only the HD camcorder provides its own power. All other electronics rely on the battery, so the more complex the mission payload, the more battery it will consume to operate. Lithium polymer batteries are state-of-the-art and make ARDI possible because they outperform any other type of battery in its weight class. During the various flights with varying payloads, ARDI has average flight times that range from 15 minutes with a full payload to 35 minutes on calm days where there is no payload. There are many wildland fire applications which ARDI can already address in its current form. Many of these come in the form of low-cost alternatives to fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft, which seem to become more expensive and less available each season. Detecting wildfire is one area where ARDI can assist in a very inexpensive way. ARDI can be piloted and observed from inside the cupola of a fire tower, offering additional detection power to the tower personnel. While ARDI is used in observer mode, tower personnel can rise hundreds of feet above the cupola for a better view. The vertical rate of climb is also very high, so it takes only moments to rise to high altitude and do a 360-degree high-definition video panorama. Later, that could be analyzed for smoke detection. Observing wildfire behavior is a risky business. Doing it from the air is even more so. And as we increase the complexity of tasks that we give to our pilots, we increase the risk to their passengers. Better risk management includes safer ways to accomplish the same thing. ARDI can safely observe the most extreme fire behavior with zero risk to human life. Both pilot and observer are safely away from the extreme conditions being observed. And as in many other emergency fields, only the robots are at risk, not the staff. Monitoring of the fire is as much a risk as observing its behavior. However, the risk factor increases with the frequency that the fire is flown. In many cases, we're monitoring to determine the rate of spread and fire growth. Monitoring of wildfires is also used as a safety precaution for fireline personnel, and so in the NWT, it's more frequent than behavior observation. For this reason, safer and more cost-effective monitoring means safer fireline operations. ARDI can fly repeated exhaustive missions to monitor changes in fire behavior, column development, and weather changes. ARDI has onboard temperature and barometric pressure sensors, and analysis of flight physics recorded on board can reflect the wind conditions. There are many options for mapping wildland fires, including fixed wing, rotary wing, satellite imagery, ground-based mapping, and many more. Depending on why a fire is being mapped, the approach to mapping might be a compromise to keep the cost low or because aircraft are not available. ARDI has the ability to create real-time maps transmitting them back to the ground station or to capture fire perimeters long after the fire is out. Fireline documentation activities can pose undue risk and expense. ARDI can address many of those issues. During planning, identification of escape routes and safety zones. During the off-season, documenting values at risk or identifying community protection objectives. During operation, visually identifying and confirming resources on the fire line. And afterwards, 
documenting things like crown fraction burn, other burn indicators, and even assisting in things like fire cause investigation. In June of 2010, Wivy and Artie joined the GNWT and a multitude of scientists and industry professionals at the Canadian Boreal Community Fire Smart Project in Fort Providence Northwest Territories. Unfortunately, the weather was not cooperative, so no fires were lit while Artie was present, but some missions were designed, flown, and fulfilled. One such mission was to provide intelligence to establish crown fraction burned in the plots that had been burned. Another mission was to evaluate the surrounding bog birch as a natural firebreak. A third and interesting mission was to assist in fire cause investigation, examining the behavior of flares fired from a conventional flare gun and to document the trajectories from altitude. All missions flown were successful and were flown in short amount of time. Many folks were impressed with the turnaround time for aerial-based intelligence and sometimes we were able to deliver in little as minutes. While the weather was not suitable for ignition nor for extreme fire behavior, it was nice enough to demonstrate Artie's observer mode, and nearly everyone, scientists, industry pros, firefighters, and citizens alike, all stopped by and experienced a flight from Artie's observer mode using the immersion goggles. The results were unanimous, and everyone enjoyed, from young to old. Artie currently has the ability to provide a unique perspective and point of view that just can't be achieved without risky and expensive alternative means. We could not talk about flying robots without talking about the future. For although Artie and other intelligent systems like it seem out of this world today, history has shown that only a small amount of time needs to go by to make phenomenal technological leaps. Even before this video was completed, Wivy began adding more technology to Artie, and what is just around the corner is also very exciting. With an upgrade to the flight controller and the addition of a navigation controller, a magnetic compass and a GPS system, Artie will be capable of autonomous flight and has already made several flights with autonomous components with varying degrees of success. Future applications could include unmanned pre-programmed smoke patrols using solar-powered electrical fuel caches with built-in charging and satellite communication systems. Independent observer cameras are another addition to Artie that's already being tested. This means that both the pilot and the observer can fly from Artie's point of view and that the observer can have control of their own camera. A head-mounted sensor can be attached to the observer's goggles. This transmits the head movement to Artie and Artie then moves the observer's camera. While the pilot is flying forward, the observer can turn their head left and at the same time the observer's camera turns left simultaneously and this gives a whole new level of experience to the observer. Look up, down and around and the observer really does feel like they are on board Artie. In other applications, a controller, very much like a video game controller, can be used to aim the cameras. Research to this end finds that a controller is far more accurate than the interpretation of head movements by accelerometers. Additional lightweight cameras can be carried together, giving two distinct high-definition video recordings that replicate the interpupular distance between human eyes. Artie has successfully flown stereo HD cameras as well as simultaneous frontward and rear-facing HD recordings. In the future, we may be able to use this stereo HD video to create a 3D fire behavior experience. New, lighter, and more efficient electronic devices are being sold each day, and now for about $5,000 US, you can put a mini FLIR or a forward-looking infrared on board Artie, along with other fire-related sensors, such as precision temperature and relative humidity sensors. In the future, Artie could provide valuable feedback real-time, as well as record sample data for computer-based analysis, and even detect things like spot fires. A new flying mode called Carefree Mode permanently orients the aircraft in the direction it was facing at the moment of liftoff, meaning that the pilot no longer has to maintain a geospatial understanding of Artie's orientation. Flying forward means flying forward regardless of which direction Artie is facing, so it can fly in a straight line while spinning 360 degrees. This also enables Artie to fly forward but allow the pilot to turn Artie to look left and right without the need to move a camera by servos, thereby saving power. Looking forward into the future, something as simple and inexpensive as a model aircraft has great potential for increasing safety, improving observation and monitoring, helping wildland fire managers make better, safer, and cheaper decisions. 
While using a micro UAV like Artie in day-to-day -day operations might not quite be reality yet, the potential of this technology cannot be denied, but will require lots of interest and political will to make it a reality. In the meantime, to find Artie, just look to the skies.